Assalamualaikum everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome back to I Am Brilliance, where we explore secrets to unlock potentials. Our very goal with this show is basically to dive into the mindsets, insights, and ingredients of success of I Am's very own high achievers in the field of academic, intellectual, and education. But most importantly, we try to invite over our very own community who have significantly contributed to the development of our society through their works. If previously we've invited students and alumni alike to share their wisdom, this week it's been our honor, and I'm so grateful from the bottom of my heart, to have our own leader, the highest leader of IAM, our, our, our rector. Not only because we are inviting him because he's our rector, but also for all the more achievements that we're going to share in the description later. So please join me in welcoming Professor Emeritus Tansri Dato Zulkifli Abdul Raza. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. At IAM Brilliance. Honestly, when I last time when we had a meeting with the SRC, and I'm very inspired by the whole concept of philosophy of education because I'm a student of philosophy myself. Ah, and I just want to ask this one very fundamental question. All these achievements that you have had, and we know that it's tedious, challenging, and it's hard. Why are you so super passionate about education? Uh, to start off with, I'm not too sure this achievement that you call achievement is an achievement itself. Um, but to come back to the question of education, I think education is a lifeline of every individual. Yeah. Uh, education will help to shape the individual, the future, the country, the nation, and everything else. Yes. So in that sense, uh, we need to invest a lot on education. But to understand education in its essence, I think, is a challenge. What is education is something that now being debated. Uh, there's a lot of ideas of what education and to a certain extent education has lost its meaning yeah once we go into the world of commercialization the education has been commoditized and therefore we need to go back to the very essence of education and this is what i think the university is for and this is where i think this uh, this uh, interview today becomes very important for me uh, to explore what do we mean by education and to move into the real meaning of education and make it happen yes. uh, in, within ourselves and also everything around us. And for you, when I learned about the <coughs> SDG, that is the direction of our university, what is your motivation behind that? Because I don't think everyone knows the story that you've yeah. shared with us. As, I, I think SDG is a convenient tagline. Mm -hmm. I think for a long time, education is about egalitarianism. Yeah. Ed education is about equality. Ed education is about the quality of life and the dignity of human person. Uh, we have lost that. And SDG conveniently comes into the picture that articulates this in the words of today so that people begin to understand it. How about so the idea of community engagement that you're bringing Part forward? of it. Yes. Yeah, when you talk about dignifying a community, meaning that you need to understand people around you mm. so that we can also give them the kind of education that they need so that they can live a life that is respectable like all of us. It doesn't mean that you need to go to a university, but I think passing on knowledge, that university so happened is a coincidence. There's no such thing as university before. We go back to the history of the Greeks and the Romans. We find that education do not exist as a structure. It exists as a kind of a, uh, engagement that people talk to one another everywhere and anywhere, exploring the minds, exploring new ideas, and how we can do things differently. Uh, only later that we have got this structure called university. Yeah. And even the word university itself is very controversial to me because it comes from the Latin word universitas. Mm -hmm. And one of the definition is about being a trustee of the European humanist tradition. So people like us who are not European, Muslim, for example, uh, will have a different perspective of what university is all about. The context of Jamia mm. and university are two very different things. So these are issues that I think we by and large has forgotten. And we assume things the way it is, that we have not gone back into philosophy, history, and trying to understand where we are and try to make you know uh, things the way it should be from our own perspective, our own worldview. So this is a challenge, I think, that this university is facing and all universities are facing. But alhamdulillah, this university has got its own uniqueness being international and Islamic. Yes. And this is where I think we're going to explore what SDG is all about in our own context yes. rather than sure. the context of somebody else. Exactly. Can you share with us this very recent book? <coughs> May I have yes. a look? 
So leading the way, realizing the distinctive International Islamic University right. written by you. Perhaps, yeah. what should IUM community and students especially must know about this? Well, I think to start off with, you have to understand that this university, from my point of view, is a very unique university. Yeah? Uh, it is international, it is Islamic. Uh, how do you then articulate this uniqueness vis-a-vis -vis other universities yeah. in Malaysia alone? I mean, they have got now 20 public universities and uh, 50 private universities. And I don't want to see IIUM uh, being, what you call, uh, categorized in any one of them. I mean, IIUM needs to be different. Mm. Not because we want to be different, because the articulations are different, the missions are different. The whole perspective of education from IUM view, I think, needs to be differentiated from all the rest. And this is why I think we need to understand what the university is all about. And we use the word distinctive there, yeah. uh, just to emphasize that we are different. Uh, not for the sake of being different, but there is a mandate, being Muslims and being Islamic, that we need to be different because of the values, because of the civilization, and because of what uh, we believe that Islam is all about. When I wanted to design the content <coughs> for this one, so I watched some videos of yours, and I stumbled upon this video. I think it was Nobel Peace Prize Week. It was related with that. And among the students, when I joined the SRC, there are many of them who, when we ask what they want to become, they say, I want to become a member of the parliament. And But we know that even on university level, it's very stressful. So for you personally, how do you manage with this dreaming big as well as like following through? For you personally, what is your motivation? We need to enjoy what we're doing. The moment we enjoy what we're doing, everything becomes leisure. Yeah. So it's no longer stressful. Yes. Uh, so you must know what you want. You must know what is it that makes you happy. Yeah. You must know what is it that when you sacrifice, you don't, uh, you know, uh, grind and whine about it. Yeah. So it is part of the journey that you enjoy. It's almost like going for a holiday, mm. you know. Uh, going to the office may be a holiday for me and to do something in the office that creates new idea and creating new profile, getting youngsters like you to be part of it is something that I enjoy doing. And therefore, this level of stress is almost minimum mm. in that particular respect. So learn to enjoy what you do and in that sense, you must know what you want. The moment you know what you want, then I think you begin to enjoy it. And in the word stress, in the word chores, the word, you know, boring, yeah. do not become part of the vocabulary at all. All right. So, and right now, what do you think the habit that you have had when you are, when you were younger, like one habit that you brought up to here? Well, when I was a student long time ago, 45, 40, 50 years ago, uh, one of the things that I look out as part of a student's activity is how do you create an environment that makes everybody happy? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we understand that, uh, particularly from people like me who come from a background which is not quote unquote uh, luxurious or which is not uh, middle class, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we know what uh, difficulty is all about. Yeah. We know what struggle is all about, you know. Uh, People that comes to my house, even at one point when I was a teenager, equate my house to a little bit more than a cattle shed. And I, those words uh, rings well in my head. And then I then want to make sure how do I make a difference for other people who are in that particular category to understand what life is all about. And one of these that I, I begin to understand is how to be happy. How to be happy is not how to be rich. They're two different things, you know. Uh, to be rich is basically to know the value, uh, to the, the price of things. Mm -hmm. uh, this is expensive, that is expensive. To be, to be happy is to know the value of things. And the value of things is something that defines who you are yeah. at the end of the day. So, uh, when I was a student, that was my mission. How do you make other people happy? How do you make other students happy? How do you make the, com the community around you happy? And to find that happiness, I think it's one of the major goals in my life. So you go around wanting to make people happy? Yes. That's the, the feeling in your heart? Yes. And, it, and to make people happy do not mean that you need to have money. Mm. You know, how you connect with them, how you show 
uh, your concern for them, and if you can solve their problem, it's well and good. If you can't, at least you empathize or sympathize with them and show a kind of a relationship of the Siratul Rahim that we talk so much yes. about uh, that makes them feel wanted and also needed at the same time. So it doesn't cost you very much, but it m makes you, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, feel that you are satisfied that you have made some other people happy in that particular context. Yes, I think that's very refreshing because a lot of times when we are youngsters, we want to be successful in terms of being more than other people yes. in wealth. Yes. But we have not think about that, like, how can I make other people happy? Yes. Would you agree with that? I mean, there is a quote, the quotation that I, I, I read from Confucius. He said, education is not about having, it's about being. In other words, again, about knowing yourself and how to be happy. It's not about possessing this and that and that, you know. And this is where I think the contrast that I'm going to make. When I was a student, uh, we barely have things with us. Yes. Except for the little knowledge that we've got. Yes. Uh, there's no handphones, there's no motorbikes, there's no this and that. Um, but those are not the thing that defines us, you know. Yes. But today I think people want to have as many things as possible while their being is neglected. I mean, I read a report recently, that the millennials are reporting they're stressful. And one of the reasons they're stressful is now they don't know where they put their handphones. Yes. They forgot to charge their handphones. Uh, you know, they have no money to... You yes. know, to, to, to pay their bills. Yes. These are stress that you actually make yes. because you possess something. Yes. If you don't possess or something, then that stressful uh, event may not even happen. Yes, I agree with that completely. So we'll come back after this commercial break. <laughs>
welcome back to I Am Brilliance, where we explore secrets to unlock potentials. Just now we were talking about whatever that one becomes today, usually it's a series of actions and habits that build up to that day. And we personally want to know how, throughout your life, what are the habits, perhaps three habits, which make you who you are today? Difficult to answer because I've never even think about it. But uh, one of those things, like I see, is, is to seek happiness and to make people happy. Yeah. I think that is that is the fundamental uh, of the things that I want to do. For example, how do you make your parents happy? In other words, before you embark into something else, you need to ask the question, will this make somebody happy? Uh, if it's not, then I think you want to consider whether this is the way to go. Yeah. But at times, I think happiness is defined quite differently in the sense that uh, you need to break some barriers, you need to break some... Uh, conventional thoughts, you know, um, that will be another another discipline that you want to have, in the sense of uh, what are the arguments that you want to put forward, yeah. that when you break traditions and conventions, you are quite clear of what you are doing. In other words, the compass, mm. where you're heading, I think is something which is important, yes. which will eventually, when you create or recreate something, it will bring a new kind of happiness. I mean. The whole realm of happiness is still is still important in this in this particular aspect. So the discipline of of getting things through mm. and 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 arguing it is something that I think you need to also be mindful of, particularly when you are in the area of education. You are so exposed to so many resources, so many people, so many ideas. Which of these ideas I think you want to put forward mm. uh, to make or to recreate an environment that will make or m make people more happy in that particular sense. And the last one, perhaps, I think, is the whole question of discipline. Uh, you need to be very mindful of where you want to go mm. and then know what are the distractors that you need to put aside. I mean, we come back to this whole question of workload, for example. I mean, yes. your workload is manageable if yeah. you know which is important and which is not. You know? If you spend so much time on social media, uh, then you'll we certainly find that your workload becomes uh, unmanageable because you have sacrificed so many, so much of your time to do something which is not important to you. Yeah. So choosing and being disciplined in that particular respect, I think, is very important. So it goes back to the question: What is it that you want to accomplish at the end of the day? Once that is clear to you, then I think we can begin to decide what is important and what is not, what is urgent and what is not, and you begin to organize your life around those things. 